So today, uh, Thursday, Thursday, Parshas Nachacha. So we'll learn Sarai Ishtech Adot Kashma, Sarai Kisara Shma, which is Anid Gimel. And then uh, hopefully we will finish up with the last mimer here, which is the mimer that's repeated uh, at every bris in, in Chabad. Okay, <clears throat> so we're in Daf Yud Gimel Amud your wife, her name was Sarai. First, Lotik Rashma Sarai. Should not call her Sarai anymore. Ki Sarashma, because her real name is Sarah. Inei Shinu Yashem Shasara. So everybody's, you know, a lot of people today are into changing their names. So where did they get this idea from? So obviously it's from this parsha. The first two people in the world whose names were changed. Avram and Sarah. And Avram became Avraham, that we talked about in the beginning of the week. And Sarai became Saras. Sarai was Avram's niece, the daughter of his brother Haran. There's a few uh, shitos about what the order of their birth was. Rukmara has a machlokas in it, in in Sanhedrin, page uh, 69b. That's the question about whether it wants to prove how many, how how long, what, what's the youngest age that a, that a, that a man can have a child at? So he brings a chitofel as the example, and then it wants to get into the question of how many children can a woman have, success one after the other in the shortest amount of time. So one of the examples it brings is the three sons of of Terach, Avram. Nachor and Haran. And the order in the Torah is Avram, Nachor, and Haran. So in any case, in dealing with that question of how long between the births, if they were actually born all together at once, if they were a triplet, in which case they're not a proof for anything. And so that's one option. The, 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 the Ben Yoyada, the Ben Yishchai, he has, a, he has a very interesting uh, explanation of why they would be triplets. And from one of the psukim, it seems like they would be triplets. And the other pasuk that the Gemara brings there, it seems that they're not, because it has the word et in between. Et, et Avram, et Nachol, ve et Aram. So from that, the Gemara learns that it wasn't in the same uh, conception. However, they could be from the same conception and not triplets. How could that be? So this is the Rebbe brings. It's a very interesting thing in and of itself. And he brings it on the Tanya that was on Tuesday, if I, if I, if I remember correctly. And there he says that in the future it says that Haravi Oledet Gam Yachdav. And Isaiah says that in the time of Mashiach the woman will give birth the same day that she conceives. That's what it sounds like. So he says there's two different interpretations of this thing. One of them is that yes, every day she could conceive and give birth. But he says that's not physically possible. And he brings this Gemara and Sanhedrin to show that even physically they can't do that. Rather, what's the other option? That from one conception she gives birth to many children. So one option is like uh, non uh, non-maternal twins. Right? You have one, two ovens that are sitting in the fallopian tubes, and both of them become, conceive. Both of them become fertilized. And usually the children come out at the same time. But they don't have to. He says, right now the nature is such that if two ovum were uh, 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 fertilized at the same time, then they'll come out together at the same moment. But it doesn't have to be that way. He says there could actually be that a person would be like there's many animals, like the classic example is the chicken. The chicken, if it's fertilized once by a rooster, I don't know for how long, but I think it's for about a year, all the eggs that it will lay will be fertilized. They can turn into, into chicks. If it's not fertilized, they're like our eggs, which are inert. They they are, our, our eggs. Our eggs that we eat that can't turn into chicks. But he says the same thing will happen by women then. And that makes more sense physically. That from one conception, one act of procreation, the woman will be able to give birth 
many, many times. And that's what Isaiah is talking about. Not necessarily that it has to happen a day after a day, because that's very short. But it could be a day after a day, meaning that you would be, they would have, they would, they would have procreation once, marital relations once, and then one child would come out on Sunday, the next one would come out on Monday, the next one would come out on Tuesday. It's not very common, but it even happens today. There are such things even today. In any case, we got to this because of this whole thing that Avram and Sarah, their names were changed. They were first people in humanity whose names were changed. And, and they were changed by, by God. And the reason that he changed their names was because he said, It's probably, it's probably, it's probably backwards if the, uh, the woman has to give birth, you know, four or five times within two weeks. Yeah. That's why conception is only going to happen. <laughs> like <once>. <laughs> <laughs> it, might be, it might be true. <laughs> So, in, in depth, the reason is, this we have to, to research, but that's, that, that's another whole sugya. It's also in, it's in Poros, and that's uh, Chet. The whole story with the uh, Save de Beatuna. You know, Rabbi Yoshua ben Hananiah goes to the philosophers of Greece and captures them for the Roman emperor. But that is all preceded by an argument between Rabbi Yoshua ben Hanina and another philosopher, one of them, about how long is the maximal amount of time that a snake can give birth after copulating. And there, the interesting answer is that the longer, the colder the animal, meaning the colder, like the snake is the, is the essence of, of coldness. It's like cold-blooded animals, also an example of it, but uh, biologically. But that the colder the animal, the colder the semen, as it were, the longer it can retain itself, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's being fertile in the female. So for the snake, it's up to seven years. And this we know today to be true, that a female snake can give birth to fertilized eggs seven years after copulating. It's, the, it's a record in the animal kingdom. There's nothing that can do that long. So here there would also be like an idea like that, 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 the, that the man would have a certain coldness to him because what, what is a Mashiach? Mashiach is overcoming the snake. How do you overcome something? You integrate it into you in the right way. So when the, when the snake, when the Nechash will be integrated in the right way into humanity, so then it could be that from one, from one act of procreation she could give birth to her whole life because the semen would re remain. Today it's only three days, say Chazam. It's like the, the most. In any case. So they were the first two people to be whose names were changed. And they were changed because they couldn't give birth. They knew that according to astrology, it's Tagidinut. That's how Chazal call it. But it comes from the word, I guess it comes from the word astro. Itzta is like an est. Astro. Astrologic. Astrology. So from there they knew that they could not give birth. And it was a tremendous act of kindness that Avram married his niece. First of all, he married her because Haran was killed. <clears throat> he also went into the fiery furnace and he was burnt. And so his two children, Lot and Sarah, were left over. Sarah's earlier name, or another name that she had, was Iska. So this girl, he married her. Lot, he adopted as a son. That's why he came with him everywhere he went. He was also Haran's son. So they were both orphans. Nahor, his brother, Avram's brother, who again, according to some opinions, is older than some opinions, he was younger, he adopted the, and he married the other daughter of Haran, Milka. So they were a family of loving kindness. It's a family that, because that's the ultimate loving kindness. It's to take an orphan girl and to marry her. But, they, but it was a double loving kindness in the case of Iska because they saw that she couldn't give birth. And according to their science, whatever they had at that time, astrological science, whatever they had, they knew that she couldn't give birth. So Hashem changed the name so that they could give birth. And we know from the fact that Avram was able to beget Ishmael before uh, uh, he changed his name, so from that we know that Avram wasn't Sarah; it was really just Sarah 
So he she knew Hashem Shasarahu liot la bchinat olada was the change of her name from Avram was in order to allow his effluence to come down in a different respect, not in terms of his uh, ability to give birth, but in terms of his ability to affect everyone with holiness. But Sarah, she couldn't give birth. That's the holiness of a woman. The holiness of a woman comes down to her childbearing ability. As, as the sages say, that they knew that Sarah could not give birth. So now he asks singularly a very technical question. He says, but in between the two names Sarah and Sarah, Sarah is with a yud at the end, Sarah is with a hey. So in Hashem's name, Yud is higher than the Hay, because Yud is the first letter, it's the Chochmah, it's the Bittu, it's, it's everything that's high. And the, her, and the Hay, even if it would be the first Hay, it's still just Bina. It's lower. Ki Yud Chochmah, Hay Bina. Venoda ki karol adam ibchinat Chochmah. But this is not just technical, he says. Because when we're talking about something coming out, something new coming out, so that comes out from Chochmah, not from Bina. So when you say to give birth, you have to understand it. man is not giving birth to to copy himself. He's not doing a copy paste. By animals, it's copy paste. All he's doing is he is is uh, creating an identical uh, 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 copy of of himself, the animal. So the horse gives birth to a horse that's exactly like him. There's nothing new there. How do we know there's nothing new? Because we haven't seen a horse suddenly act like a sheep because he needs to, or act like a cow, or do anything. They retain their nature. They can't change it. So in that sense, they remain the same. So it's not coming from the mind. It's coming from the midos. But in a man, when I give birth to my son, he could be completely different than me. If I sit and learn, he might be a sports uh, person. No connection at all. He's not interested in what I do. For him to do what I do is like death. It's like not being in this world. It's one of the things that a lot of parents don't understand. You didn't come to copy-paste yourself. You came to create something new. And to create something new, that comes from Chachma. It doesn't come from Bina. Why? Because Chachma comes from nothingness. And the nothingness, as we said last week when we were learning this, according to most opinions, there has to be nothingness in between every two, something, every two beings. So if some, one being is going to create a different being, there has to be a point of nothingness in the middle. So there has to be Chachma in the middle. Wisdom. But if you're going to... So what he's saying is, it's not that Sarah was necessarily infertile. She might have been very fertile. But she could only, if she had only Bina, that's, that's the understanding right now. Okay, that's the Hava Amina. She could only give birth exactly like an identical twin of herself. Which is very interesting, because that's exactly what women can do, the men can't. Okay. For instance, in the snake, going back to that, we know there's something called, I don't remember what it's called, that the snake fertilizes itself, as it were. It doesn't really fertilize itself. It just makes the sperm, uh, it just makes the eggs fertile in some way, that they are not inert. But they will be complete, 100% genetic copies of the mother. I think tigers also. That all, in, oh. in theory, all females can do that. Yeah. The snake is just the one that we know, we've seen it a lot. In other forms of life, um, I don't think it's ever been seen, but theoretically it's possible. Basically, what they did with Dali, with the sheep that they, uh, that they uh, what do you call it? Cloned. They cloned, was to facilitate that process. They, but they, they weren't even sure how they did it. I don't know if to this day they know 100% why sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. But it's actually building on something that already exists in the female. So that's called giving birth from Bina, from understanding. Because Bina is Yesh. There's no ayin there. The ech na fochu sheliyot la koach aloda lo kach meita koach ayud vinetan lo koach ayi bim komo. So seemingly the order here is the opposite. She had a yud, which would be the power of giving birth to something new, something from nothing, a new being from nothing, 
and he gives her instead the hay, which is something from something. So that you're calling now to give birth, she had, she had something better before. If the hay has been... What do you mean? Of course it is. <laughs> no, the hay that Sarah got in her name, was it a bina hay or was it a malchus hay? No, it doesn't matter. In any case. Oh. Even at the highest level, if it's malchus, it's even less. It's, it's, it's nothing of the, of nothing of the time. So what's the answer? Vaimian ki Avraham v'Sarayim chinat chokma ila v'chokma tata. Aha. So now we have to understand that Kabbalah is all relative. So you know this. You know, say it for the sure. Relative means that when you say chokma and bina, you say wisdom and understanding. You say yud hey. You have to ask, where are these yud and hey situated? So that, as it turns out, because there's interinclusion. So there's yod hey at every level. So at the highest level, the level of chokma, they're called chokma. They're called ima ve'aba ilain, chokma ve'bina ilain. They're called the supernal yod k. And really, there's the supernal yod k within the yod. That's that's how they are. So there, really, the hey. What he's saying here is that the hey that Sarah had was the hey of the yod. How do you see this, for instance? So says the Arizal, it's very see- easy to see it. If you write the Yud out full, in full, Yud Vav Dalid, so now you see that really there's a Yud there, the first letter, and the Vav Dalid itself creates a hey. And so there's really a Yud K within the Yud. You write it out in full, so you see that the Yud itself, the first letter of Hashem's name, contains two letters, Yud and hey. The Vav Dalid put the Vav under the hey, okay. and it becomes a hey. Right. And so that, and, and really there's such a thing that when you write Hashem's name, there's a, sometimes there's a kavana that the, that the, that the foot, under, the, the, the letter that's not really connected should be more connected. Okay. You, you make it a little bit longer. So it's, it looks like a little bit more like a vav than like a little yud. Usually it looks like a little yud. Mm-hmm. So, so, so says in Yud K of the Yud, in the higher supernal Yud K that are within the Chochma itself, there, indeed. The the hay is a is a is a is, a, is like a sense of uh, is a sense of of uh, yesh there. It creates a symptom because if there would not be any symptom within chokma, really the power of symptom, like what he says here, comes out from the hay. It doesn't come from the yud. The yud is not symptom. It's like it's not it's bittel. But the power of tzimtzum is the yesh, the feeling of it's like the, what we talked about that, uh, uh, in the early uh, two, two first days of the week, that there's some kind of uh, masach, there's some kind of uh, curtain separating from the source and how things come down. So that he was writing about what he wrote before, and so Sarah is the one; she's the curtain here, <laughs> and she's separating the yud so that the light can come down in a way. The effluence that's coming down through Avram will be able to be sustained in the world and not destroy it because it would be too strong. Right. I mean, the the, the um, it's a little bit of a paradox because you can understand how there can be yesh within the within the level of yesh. Once you go up into the level of ilah, where everything is bittel, right. So very nice. You can understand bittel within bittel, but how do you understand the concept of? Tzimtzum. Of Tzimtzum and Yeshos within the level of Bittal. It's a, it's a little bit paradoxical. Yeah. So how can it be? Because even here, okay, we're not ah, talking... Ma chazarta? Or shalom chazarta? There's a reason. No, but it's not. As in Makavah's man ha'ita. It's a bit on that. So even here, we have to say that, the, that when you talk about the Yud, you're still not talking about the real, real type of Bittal. You're really not talking about the essence of Bittal yet. It's not the full bitl yet. There has to be something even higher. <laughs> because here you already have, again, it's interinclusion. So there's an aspect of the opposite within it. So it's not pure bitl. It already has some aspect of tzimtzum within it. 
some kind of masach, some kind of, that has to stop, because if it was pure bittel all the way through, it, it would just be a conduit for the infinite light, and there would be nothing stopping the light from reaching the lower levels and destroying them. So we know that's what happened in the world of Tov. That's what we talked about uh, two so, weeks ago. Right. So the so the the level of Yesh within the internal inclusion level of Bittel has to be such a unique Tzimtzum right. that it is able to handle that infinite Bittel on the one hand, right. but then also transform it into preparation for for being received. For, for, yeah. But because of that, he says she can't give birth because she's too um, involved in in, stop, in 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 taking care of, of of her husband, as it were. Let's call it like that. So this is a tremendous this is a tremendous um, example of how uh, sometimes the way a woman treats her husband is her undoing. It's very, very interesting. Because if she's too engrossed in stopping him, because she feels that he's too, I don't know, overbearing, overflowing, whatever it is. So it might be that she's also uh, uh, closing herself up to being able to give birth. That's one, one thing. The other thing that comes out, which is a little bit easier to digest, is that depending on how much she can open herself up to to allow her husband to, say it another way, to allow the house to be an open house instead of to close it. So that allows her to, uh, to give birth. Meaning if she's too involved in supporting him okay, all the time and not opening the house up to other people, then she can't give birth. If she's very open to other people and, and she's not so, you don't see her so involved there, it might be, especially if she's an intellectual type, so she'll she'll give birth very easily. It's a very interesting thing that comes out of this. Okay. If she's too involved in stopping his light, which could have all kinds of meanings. One meaning is that she's she's just worried about him all the time, and she can't can't host guests, like she can't allow anything else in. So then she'll find it hard to to give birth. Let's give it a, a more down-to-earth a muscle. If I'm a thinker and I have a lot of ideas, but I'm worried all day about how they'll be received, what will it sound like? And I'm a, I'm a, is it too hard for people to understand this? Should I make it easier? Is there an antithesis to what I'm saying? Is it a counter-argument? that wouldn't allow somebody to accept my chiddush or something like that, I'll never ever write it down. I'll never distribute it. Because I'll be too stuck with my bina. My bina will stop the flow of my, of my mind, of my, of, my, uh, of my chiddush, of my ability to bring something new into the world. That's in the person himself. Between me and myself, I have chokhmah and bina also in my chokhmah. So my chokhmah is where my new ideas come from. If my bina and my chokhmah is working overtime, and this person who's second guessing himself or just worrying that what he's saying is not going to be accepted, he'll never be able to, uh, to do it. No, well, well, that, I'm not sure exactly I understand what you're saying. I, I mean, the way I would understand that, uh, that, that concept would be if the bina has experiences too much of a yesh, if it experiences the yesh too much, then it's, then it, then it is. It is self-conscious. So, so that's self-consciousness. Self-consciousness. I'm, not I'm not experiencing necessarily myself. I'm also myself. It's but I'm experiencing the world too strongly. So too strongly. So it's, it's this, the experience. So it stops me from being able to get my message across. Right. It stops the flow of my, uh, of, my, uh, uh, of my special, unique contribution to the world. That's what you're saying here? Okay. That's how Sarah was. That's how Sarai was before with the Yud. She was in the Chochmah itself already. And she can't be there. That's one of the things. You have to separate them. There, there, is, a, there is a Bina there. There has to be a Bina there. There has to be some uh, uh, amount of criticism. Or call it a uh, 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 reality check. <laughs> you can call being a reality check. To be a Yesh is like, to, to, what are you talking about? 
You have to have some counter argument to what you say. All right, okay, so I understand what you're saying. So you were saying that there's more like an equilibrium where the Bina aspect of the Chachma is, is, is such a powerful Bina because it has aspects of Chachma to it to the point that it's, it's almost a complete... No, yeah, this is the Bina in Chachma. It's the, not a separate Bina. The Bina, the bina within Chachma. It's part of the Chachma. It's part of the wisdom. It's part of the process that brings new light into the world. Right away, there's a counterindication there. There's something that counters the light that comes in. That's, that's the Bina of Chochma. And if it counters it... Compl- too strongly, completely, it'll stop it. And, but, but the way that it would do that would be that Chochma is, is more infinite properties than, than, bin, than Bina. So if Bina is... If it's relative, if Bina is, has, is more... If it's, not, if it's a Bina that has been... It's not the Bina that's separate. It's the Bina within Chachma. Right, so it's also bina related within, to in the infinite. Right. So it's the B, because it's a Bina within Chachma, it's a, it's a much more powerful, much more infinite Bina. Okay. So and, there, and therefore... It's the only fil- thing that can filter out the, the, the real Chachma. The real Chachma. But if it filters it out too much... Right. Then, and other, so it could be self-consciousness, that the being comes from self. It could be too much worrying about how people will receive this. Usually, what's, when it's within Chachma, it's more about me. And it could also be, <coughs> it could, how would it function in the right way? Why is it there? So the easy answer is, if a person hears voices, he can't trust them. <laughs> what gives them the reality check about? Let's say I, I hear something. I have this, I, I think God is talking to me. So what stops me from saying God is talking to me? My bina in my chokhmah. My understanding in my wisdom. My wisdom is attuned to all kinds of things. But the Bina there, the understanding there, stops me and says, hold on, reality check for a second. You're not a prophet. So if anything is talking to you, it's you yourself. So how much do you trust yourself? Okay, that's a different question. But don't make it into some kind of divine message. So it could be that you have a good idea. Let's think about it. But, the, but that's what the Bina in the Chochmah is supposed to do. I'll give another example. There is... Um, this is not an example that's for everybody. We'll see. I have a couple minutes. Um, when mathematicians dream up new math, so there's mathematicians that don't care whether it's realistic or not. Whatever it is, that's what it is. There's a guy called Ramanathan, who was one of the greatest mathematicians in the 20th century. He passed away when he was 33. He was, hit. He was an Indian, and they brought him to England. He worked under... Uh, under the Whitehead and Russell. And uh, he used to dream math. When I go to sleep, I dream about uh, <laughs> the food. I know what I dream about. When he used to go to sleep, he used to dream up new math that simply didn't exist. And he used to write them down. Uh, all his dreams, all his mathematical dreams. They're called Ramanathan's notebooks. And they're very famous in the, in the mathematical community. So some of them are like way out there. Nobody knows what in the world he's saying. Nobody understands what he's trying to say. He didn't understand himself, but he thought it would be useful for somebody sometime down, down in history. So that's why he wrote them down, or he really believed in himself. I don't know. The Bina within the Chochmah would be, does this have an application? Are you just dreaming up stuff that doesn't mean anything, which again, a theoretical mathematician doesn't care. He's just in the Chochmah of Chochmah. But in the Bina of Chochmah, it's like asking, does this math actually apply to anything in our reality? And if it does, it's worthwhile pursuing. Let's pursue this idea. So it's asking, is there an application? So that's good Bina. That's how Bina should work. And it's because of that that the Bina has what's called Tvunot. And Tvunot is the applicative aspect of Bina. So now we're getting deeper into the Arizal, well, it's not so important, but that there are certain ways in which the light needs to be applied. And if the Bina can't find it, and the Bina being the representative of Yeshus, of some kind of being, some kind of reality, then, then stop this thought, it's not, it's not worth anything. Okay? So that's where Sarah was, she was this Bina that was in Chochmah. So that's why she, her name ended with a Yud. Masha Enken, when she had a hay, when Hashem gave her a hay instead of a yud, hule hefech mamash. Sheim ayah o mitztamtzem, ayah 
Very interesting how you wrote, wrote Mitztamtim. We don't write it this way. I don't write it this way. No, so be, either be, it's a because mistake. I, because Avraham now had a hay. So maybe, so now the hay yeah. was given yeah. to Avraham. So now Avraham is putting a little bit of the tzimtzum maybe. No, I'm, I'm saying how he wrote grammatically the word Mitztamtim. We don't write it this way today. We, we reverse. So it's either a mistake. I have to check. It might be just a mistake. But we put the tzaddik before the tet. Mitztamtim. And here they wrote mit tzamtzim. Nichora it's mem tough like they wrote because mit gale. But mit gale only has three, the root only has three letters. I think that the reason that you put the tough bef- after the tzaddik is because here the, for, the, the root is a double, is a double, uh, is, a, is a double couple of letters. It has four letters. The special roots are called uh, kfulim, that the same uh, two letters appear twice, like tzimtzum. Tzimtzum is the root itself. So, שיהם היה או מצטמצם, היה חושך ואלם והסתר גמור, ועיקר התאבות המצות על ידי בחינת התפשטות והרחבה דווקא. So when, when, when Avram yeah, is now um, uh, uh, already giving the light that he needs to give, if Sarah would remain there, so she would she would close everything off. So, 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 so that's not the right way. So instead, there has to be a bina that's outside the chokhmah, and that's what Sarah needed to move to. And this bina it does something else. It takes the light and it forms it. It gives it suva. It gives it some kind. It <coughs> builds it up. That's bina from the from the word, from the meaning of binyan. That Bina Yitra Nitna Isha, really what Chazal is trying to say is that she has the ability to build things, to construct things. The Kanoda, Binyan Gimel Kutsin Shaleut, Shakotsa Tachton Makov, the Koha Bina, Talui Bakotsa Elion. I won't get into this one. The Kanoda, Binyan Tmunat Shnei Hei, that the fact that there's two Hei's in Yudke Vavke. Umasha Nit Vasef Lavram, Hei Avram, a nomuli. Avram u pchinat hoch maela, hainu kmo shem frash me mikha ki av amon goim, adar u pchinat ha nefesh el subacham pchinat ha alam iz elu madze. So Avram had this ability now to become the father of many nations, which really meant, as we saw, to give them, to give living people a sense of godliness. Av lu uledet yitzchak sidra de kdusha lo haya tsarich ki adrba, kol sidra de kdusha pchinat bitul velo itpashtut. So for Avraham, there, he didn't need to move down from where he was. He could continue to be the infinite that he was. But in order to bring down from him into reality something that was like him, Sarah had to be not the hay that was in the Chofma. She had to be the hay that's outside the Chofma. And that's why she had to have the additional hay. So he's saying she didn't lose the Yud, really. She remained also attached to Avram at the level of Chochmah. But now she also came down to become the hay that's separate from, from Chochmah. So we'll do a little bit more about this uh, tomorrow.